and welcome to worship today. Today we're continuing our journey through Micah 6 8. You know, O oh human, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This week we're on to love kindness. Loving kindness, hesed, faithful love, compassion. So I want you to stop for a moment and think of a kindness that someone has done to you. Think of an act of kindness that you have given to someone. And I want you to picture God showing you loving kindness, showing you compassion, showing you faithful love. I invite you to be enveloped in the loving kindness of God. Let us worship God. Amen. I'm going to read you two scripture passages this morning. The first comes from Micah 6 8. God has told you, human one, what is good and what the Lord requires from you. To do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. And I want to read a second scripture from Matthew 9, 35-38. Jesus traveled among all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, announcing the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were troubled and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are very few workers. Therefore plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for the harvest. A minister's meeting where it started at 9 in the morning and so that meant I had to get up at 5 and walk the dog in order to get ready and get out of the house to get there by 9 and so there wasn't time for me to make coffee because I don't have one that you can program and have it shoot out at you and I usually forget because I'm so busy taking care of all the pets that I don't make myself any food or breakfast so when I got in the car, I was like, well, when I get gas, should I run in and grab a Coke? And then I said, decided no, because there's a Starbucks on the way. And I got to the Starbucks and I knew it was the end of the month and $6 is a lot of money to spend on coffee, but it is caramel brulee season. A little piece of heaven in your mouth when you drink it. And so I ordered my caramel brulee and I pulled up to the barista, and the barista says, the person in front of you paid for your coffee. And I was deeply grateful, because I knew that I couldn't really afford the coffee, that there wasn't that much left in my bank account. And I really wanted to taste that little slice of heaven. Kindness. When we talk about kindness, what do we mean by it? And what do we mean when we say loving kindness? Because that's the description that this word in Hebrew is giving. 
that we are to act with loving kindness, that we're to embrace faithful love, that we were to practice steadfast love, that we're to share unfailing love, that we're to practice mercy. Acts of kindness and mercy. And while I like this idea of random acts of kindness where the stranger buys me a cup of coffee, this idea of chesed is more than that. It's not just doing an act, giving money to that person. It's having your heart change, having a sense of in yourself, a feeling of compassion that leads you to act with mercy. So it isn't just giving food to the poor or giving money to the poor. It's more than that. Hesed is that you were thinking about the poor, that what was happening to them bothered you, that you cared for them. And so out of that caring, you give food to the hungry. You visit someone who is sick. You show your compassion and understanding. You do as Jesus commanded us to love your neighbors. The Gospels are full of stories of mercy and compassion. The story I read to you today are the summary paragraphs that Jesus will have gone on a teaching tour or a healing tour and been traveling around the countryside. And so we have a paragraph just describing what happens as Jesus moves from one location to the other. And what this passage says is that he, he traveled around and people gathered him as he went from cities to villages into surrounding synagogues as he announced the good news and shared the kingdom of God with everyone. He healed diseases and sickness. He cast out demons. And when Jesus saw the crowds, Many of these passages say he had compassion. When he saw the crowds gathered, he had compassion. That his healing acts, his curing of sickness, his casting out of demons, grew out of that inner sense within himself, that compassion, that loving kindness, that essence, and he shared it with those he encountered. So if you were to read through the Gospels, and I did a quick search, and I won't share every story with you, but if you just did a word search for either the word compassion or the word mercy, you would come up with a number of stories. You would come across the healing of the two blind men, because what happens is Jesus and the disciples are walking, and two blind men are sitting by the side of the road, and they shout out, Show, show us mercy, Lord, son of David. And when the disciples keep walking, they shout louder and louder, show us mercy, Lord, son of David. And Jesus stops. He hears their cries, he stops, and he asks them, what do they want from him? And they both say, we want to see. Jesus has and shows compassion for them, touched their eyes, and immediately they were able to see, and they followed him. That's the story from Matthew 20. There's also the story from Matthew 17, in which a crowd was around Jesus, and a man met Jesus. He knelt before him, saying, Lord, Show mercy on my son. He's epileptic and suffers terribly, for he often falls down into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't do anything for him. And Jesus talks about his faithless disciples. How long will I be with you? How long will I put up with you? And then he asked the man to bring his boy to him. And Jesus then spoke to the evil within that child, to the misery and anguish and sorrow within that child. 
and healed that child. And the disciples asked, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we heal? And Jesus says, you don't have the faith. I assure you that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, go from there, and it will go. There will be nothing that you can't do. But I wonder if the difference is that feeling that we're talking about today, that middle command to us, to act kindly, to perform acts of loving kindness, to show hesed to other people, to embrace others with faithful love. I mean, we also hear this story from Matthew 15. Jesus called the disciples to him and said, I feel sorry, I have compassion for the crowd because they have been with us for days with nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away and have them drop and faint and fall with hunger. So he, his disciples ask him, where are we going to get the food? How are we going to be able to feed them in the wilderness, satisfy this big of crime? And Jesus says, how many loaves of bread do you have? And they respond, seven loaves and a few fishes. And he sat the crowds down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and the fishes and he gave thanks and he broke them into pieces and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate and was full. Jesus showed compassion. He embraced that faithful love. His spirit was moved to act. We're invited on that same journey to show loving kindness, to act with mercy, to embrace faithful love, a love that causes us to see poverty and act to make sure that people have food to eat, a love that causes us to see that there is hunger within our community, that there are kids that don't have enough food to eat, and pack bags for those kids that weekly get enough meals to make it through the weekend. To show kindness. Those acts of kindness we do when we gather gloves and mittens and pajamas to share with the food pantry. Those acts of kindness when during Lent we fill our sanctuary with food so that we can build an Easter basket for each of the families in the food pantry. Those acts of kindness, when you go to the store in July before the sales have even hit and you buy school supplies because there are children in town who could use the money that they would have to spend on school supplies. For feeding their family, for buying medicine. And so our act of kindness, of getting those school supplies, of delivering them to those families in need, is an act of loving kindness. It's an embrace of faithful love. We're invited in this passage to embrace kindness, to act with faithful love, to act with steadfast love, to embrace those we see with compassion and mercy. Amen. Earthquakes and more. 
Our aim is to acknowledge this, to mourn this, and to know that in all this there is the possibility of more life. If we are to be overwhelmed, let it be that we are overwhelmed with the assurance that we are not alone. We mourn the loss of life. For so many, the pandemic has taken loved ones. We mourn the loss of those close to us and those whose names we do not know. We mourn those who perished while working to save other lives. We mourn those who died not of the pandemic, but of other causes. And we mourn the loss. In many cases of our ability to be with them as they passed, our loss of gathering together for comfort in the ways we needed so much within our community. We mourn the loss today. of Leroy Abel. Of Reverend Wynn Alley. Charlene Langdon Hackman. Don Riddlesberger. Leonard Sprinkle. Marianne Scheffler. Bob Wenland. Betty Rimmer. Kenneth David Humini. I light this candle in memory of my loving brother, James L. Schaffner. Ray Miller and Jeff Sloan. Chuck and Dolly Hensel. Of Wayne Neary. Of Danny Morris. Of Mark. Riddlesburger. And now light a candle and say the names of those that you have lost. We mourn this loss of life. Within you is the spring of life. In your light we see life. That's what Psalm 36, 9 says. When we feel as if our light is dim, we can rely on the holy light 
to continue to shine until we ourselves shine bright once more. We are not alone. Hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Holy One, gather us into your heart. O oh, good and gracious God, gather us into this place called love, where you gentle our souls and comfort our hearts, where you show us acts of compassion and faithful love, where your mercy surrounds us and comforts us. Gather us into your loving arms and pour your spirit upon us. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, for you have created a community, a people, and called it good. You called us out to us in the voice of the prophets, in the voices of the poor, in the voices of our friends and families, in the voice of Jesus. Though we have often turned away, believed our ways were superior, that we could do it on our own, Still, you call us to be your body on earth. Here at this table, remind us we are part of each other, part of the whole world, entwined with your saints in many places and times, broaden our thinking, stretch our imagination, make us aware that in both giving and taking, we are part of the whole. You have placed in our hands the ability to destroy or build up. You have placed in our hearts the longing for connection. You have placed in our minds the certainty that we cannot understand it all. Here at this table, we are surrounded by a whole cloud of witness. Giving, give us the vision to see your kingdom face. Table filled with all whom you loved and always with room for more. As we do hear what you once did in an upper room where you gathered with your friends to share a meal, where in that meal you took a loaf of bread, you held it up and you blessed it and broke it, and you offered them a slice, a piece of heaven. You said, take, eat, this was broken for you. And then after supper, you took a cup of wine. You poured it and blessed it. And you said, this is my love poured out for you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Drink this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Send your spirit again to this place to guide us in your way of life, to breathe through our choices, to hold us when the way is difficult. Make us again into your body, doing your will, loving and caring for the world. Amen. Take and eat the bread of heaven. and drink the cup of love.
Let us pray. God, send us forth to show what we have received. May we forgive as we have been forgiven. May we love as we have been loved. May we show mercy for the mercy that we have received. Amen. We're so glad you joined us today for worship. If you'd like to find out more about our ministries or donate to our ministry, please visit stpaulshinkley.org. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. Be gentle with yourself this week. Show and practice acts of kindness, compassion, and mercy. Amen.